Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His help, and we ask for His forgiveness. And we take refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequence of our evil actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide, and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, there is none to guide. And I testify that Allah alone is worthy of worship and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah and his true worshipper. My dear listeners, brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity, today I am going to be embarking on a journey, a journey to take you through a very amazing and interesting topic. And that is the proof that Islam is the truth. And that it really is what I'm going to be trying to show to you over the next series of programs that we can prove that Islam truly is the religion that has been revealed by Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth for the guidance and the benefit of all of humanity. Now before of course we actually go into the main topic itself, I would like to spend a little bit of time dealing with what may seem to be periphery issues, but they're very important. I want to talk about what is proof, what is faith. When I say we can prove that Islam is the truth, what do I mean by that? Some people would already look at that as a type of oxymoron. How can you prove a faith to be true? Isn't faith supposed to be something that you believe? without proof? Isn't that what the meaning of faith is? So I want to examine that. What is the meaning of faith and what is the meaning of proof? But first of all, I would like to mention an ayah of the Qur'an. The ayah of the Qur'an is actually, it is not only one ayah, it is something that is repeated again and again in the Qur'an. So the Qur'an tells us, say, if what you claim is true, bring your proof. Bring your evidence, bring your proof. If you are making a claim about Allah, if you are making a claim about anything in fact, what is upon you and what is an obligation upon you is to bring your burhan, your proof, your evidence. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions many, many different times in the Qur'an. In other words, it is not enough just to make a claim. You have to prove your claim. And this is something that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he also mentioned. That the proof is upon the claimant. The person who is making a claim has to prove it. Because otherwise we would claim the blood and the property of each other. And this is the reality. So I'm sure that every single one of you is familiar with this in your daily life. For example, if someone comes round to check your electricity meter or to check your gas meter if you have such a thing or your water meter if you have such a thing then that person will usually be wearing a uniform or they will usually carry an identity card if that person came knocking at your door dressed like someone from the Hells Angels motorbike club with you know long hair and I don't know a leather jacket and with the uh, you know love and hate tattooed on his fist you, I don't think you would be letting that person in your house. Rather, you would say, you know what, you stay right where you are because you're not coming in my house and checking out my house and seeing what's in there because what are you thinking? Oh, this person is now going to come and this person is going to rob me. And this person is going to come in my house and steal everything. So if someone's coming to check the utility bills, you want to see an ID, you want to see the person wearing a uniform before you let that person in your house. In other words, you want some type of evidence that that person is who they claim to be. Similarly, in another example, if I said today, for example, all oh, these studios here, they don't belong to Peace TV, they belong to me. They belong to Abdurrahim Green, and this is my place, and you guys get out, I'm in charge of here now. No one's going to take me seriously. If I go to court and I want to make a claim about something, if I want to claim some place belongs to me, or some property belongs to me, then I have to bring evidence, I have to bring proof. I can't just say, well, what's my proof? I believe it, I have faith. You know, that's not good enough. No one accepts that type of thing 
in everyday life. So why should it be any different when it comes to religion? In fact, if you think about it, the issues in religion are even more important than these worldly issues. Whether this place belongs to me or belongs to Peace TV, whether someone robs my house or not, is very insignificant compared to the consequences of what any religion is saying because religion is talking about the purpose of our whole life. Religion is talking not only about the purpose of this life, but what is going to happen to us in the life to come, the eternity. So therefore, is it enough that someone just comes along and makes a claim? Someone just says, oh, God says this, God says that. You should believe this, you should believe that. Surely, the logical approach to anyone who makes a claim about God is bring your evidence if what you say is true. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Muslims to say. For example, if a Christian comes to us and makes a claim about God, that Jesus is God or he is the son of God, or the Bible is from God, well, bring your proof if what you say is true. And this is the same for anybody about anything. But it's only a matter of time before a person is going to say, well, you know, you Muslims, you claim your religion is from God. You claim your religion is from the Creator. Well, you bring your proof if what you say is true. And in fact, really, that's just what we're waiting for. Because we will be more than happy to furnish and to provide the proof to show that Islam is the truth. And that's what we're going to be hoping to do, inshallah ta'ala, over, may, with the will of God, over the next few programs. And that is to really show some and to give a bit of insight into some of the evidences that we can have and that we can show in, in order to illustrate and to show that Islam really is the religion that has been revealed by Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And I say bring evidences because if you open the dictionary and you look at the dictionary evidence or the dictionary description of proof, proof actually is a collection of evidences. And when you get enough evidence, then you could say that that thing is proven to be true. Because of course on a philosophical level, we could say you can't really prove absolutely anything. In an absolute sense, you can't prove anything. There is always, I suppose, a type of room for a little bit of doubt. However small, there is always a potential for some type of doubt. And so what we really mean here, when we say we're going to prove that Islam is the truth, what we hope to do is to provide so much evidence that a person will not really have any reasonable cause to doubt that thing. It's rather like a court. It's rather like when you go to court, for example. Now, in the UK, for example, we have a jury system. That means that when a particular case goes before the court, the jury makes a decision based upon the evidence in front of them. And that's what they should do. They shouldn't be looking, oh, what is the color of this person's skin? They shouldn't be looking at whether this person is beautiful or ugly. They shouldn't be looking at whether this person is rich or poor. No. The way that it should be done is the people should look at the evidence and they should look at it dispassionately and they should look at it clearly from a type of intellectual unbigoted point of view. And so based upon the evidence, they make a verdict. They have to make a verdict. Guilty or not guilty. Now ultimately, that verdict has to be made. Ultimately, that decision has to be made. Is the person guilty or not guilty? And that in a sense is what I want to move on to is the actual, what we could call faith. What is faith? What do we mean by faith exactly? Because for some people, as I've mentioned, isn't it an oxymoron proving faith? Isn't faith supposed to be something that you just believe? Well, that's what we're going to look into. 
isn't faith something you just believe or is it something that can actually be proven in some way? Okay, brothers and sisters, we're going to take a break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the proof that Islam is the truth. And today we are talking about what is proof and what is faith and can we prove a religion to be true? Now let's go back to the issue of faith. What do we mean by faith? Now, let's take an example. One of the things I often ask people is, do you believe that spins on its axis and goes round the sun in 365 days? Now most people I ask, they say yes. We believe that. We do believe that's true. I said, do you believe it 100%? Are you absolutely sure? Do you really believe it? They say, yes, we believe it. We're sure it's true. It's a fact. That's what they call a fact. Then I say, okay, prove it. And it's very interesting how many times I get complete blank expressions. Because although most of us believe that the earth spins on its axis, and goes round the sun in 365 days. If we were actually asked to prove it, then most of us not be able to do that. That doesn't mean that we don't believe this thing based upon some good reasons. And of course, the reasons that we believe that is because, well, for example, the scientific community, scientists, have examined certain things, they've come up with certain theories, and they have made certain observations. So based upon those theories and those observations of those theories in practice, and so many scientists have observed this thing so many times, then they consider it to be a fact. They consider it to be something that is proven to be true. But of course, most of us ourselves couldn't really prove it, we wouldn't really know what exactly is the evidence, we might have some type of idea, but we have faith in the scientific community. We have faith in science because, well, look at what science has done, look what science has produced. So there are many reasons that we might have faith in something, and this is a type of faith. It is a faith in science, and it's a faith in the teachings of science. It's maybe not what we're used to in terms of religious faith, but it's still a belief, it is still a type of faith. And therefore, when it comes to Islam, when it comes to the teachings of Islam, when it comes to our topic here, the proof that Islam is the truth, the evidences that we can accumulate to know that Islam is the divine revelation from Allah, then what we are really talking about here is this type of faith. It's the same type of faith that you have when you go to a doctor. And you know, you put your faith and your trust in the doctor. And you know, he examines you and he looks at you and you believe that because he's the doctor, you trust him because he's the doctor, because he's studied, because he's got knowledge, you trust and you believe that his diagnosis is going to be accurate and is based upon some information. And so this is the type of faith that we are talking about in Islam. We don't mean when we talk about faith in Islam, when we talk about belief, when we talk about Iman, we don't mean believing something unbelievable without any evidence. No. What we mean in Islam is we are asking you, Allah is asking you, to believe something entirely believable that there is one God, that this universe has one creator. And if you watch my previous series of programs about the proof of the existence of God, which I do encourage you to refer to as an essential part of this, then you'll be familiar with what I'm talking about. So we are asking you, the Islam is asking you to believe that there is one God and to believe that God has sent guidance to a human being, Muhammad, May God's peace and blessings be upon him. And that God has given some evidences through which and by which any reasonable, rational person
can come to know that Islam is truly the religion that has been revealed by the creator of the heavens and the earth for the benefit of all the human beings. And so that is what we are going to be touching upon over this series. These evidences, what are they? Now some of these evidences are rational proofs that are connected to what we've already talked about in previous series about the existence of God, but we're not going to be repeating that. What we're going to be going through is some of the miraculous aspects of the Qur'an. We'll be talking about what exactly is a miracle, what do we mean by a miracle exactly, what place does it have in this process of proving and understanding that something is from God. And we'll be going through those things to discuss and to understand uh, these evidences. Finally, I would really like to finish with a surah from the Qur'an. And it's Surah Al-Bayyina, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Never, كُلِّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَحْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ So never will those people from the Ahl al-Kitab, from the people of the book, or the mushrikeen, or the people who are making shirk with Allah, they are making partners with Allah, whether it is the idol worshippers, or the atheists, or the pagans, or whoever, they will never leave off their disbelief. They are not going to leave off their disbelieving in Allah, and they are not following Allah's guidance. Until there comes to them, al bayyina until it comes to them the clear evidence so this is allah is telling us something really about the nature of people people need evidence they need proof they need something to make them realize and understand that this thing or such and such thing is true and what is that proof rasul min allah a prophet a messenger from allah so this is one thing. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself is of course one of the clear evidences that Islam is the truth. And actually we talked about this already in a previous series of lectures. So we won't be repeating that. Rasulun min Allah yatlu suhfan mutahara. And that means that he is bringing purified pages. And this here is a reference to of course the Qur'an and that is something that we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about the Qur'an this is of course the great miracle that Allah has given to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Qur'an فِيهَا قُطُبٌ قَيِّمَةٌ and that means with like the laws that are clear and that are obvious so this is the other thing it is the guidance of Islam the guidance of the Qur'an the, the laws that are there in the religion of Islam. This is another whole topic, my dear brothers and sisters, that we're going to be exploring. Some of the beautiful aspects of the religion of Islam, the Muslim way of life, how we can examine it and how this way of life itself is a type of proof and an evidence that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are some of the areas that we are going to be examining. We're going to be talking about the Qur'an. We're going to be talking about the preservation of the Qur'an, the memorization of the Qur'an, some of the miraculous aspects of the Qur'an. For example, the amazing scientific facts that are contained in the Qur'an, the historical information, the facts that there are concerning historical events, that no one could have known 1,400 years ago. Also the prophecies of the Qur'an and the prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some things the Qur'an tells us about the future and things that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us about the future, things that he said were going to happen and they happened exactly how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it would happen. Also, we're going to be talking about the miracles of the Prophet ﷺ, the amazing things that were done by the Prophet ﷺ, in addition, of course, to the miraculous nature of the Qur'an, its linguistic, miraculous nature, uh, the beauty of the Qur'an, and other amazing facts about the Qur'an. 
Also, we will be talking about the witnessing of the people of the book. This is one of the very strong evidences that many people from Ahlul Kitab, from the scholars of the Jews and the Christians, have recognized that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the messenger of Allah. So insha'Allah we will be mentioning some of those evidences that have been used from the Bible to show that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been foretold in their scriptures. And also we'll be talking about the stories of some of those people like Abdullah ibn Salam, one of the Jewish rabbis of Medina, and of course the famous story of Salman al-Farsi, which is very, very instructive in that regard. So we'll be talking about some of those things, which is a very, very interesting uh, aspect, which is another series of evidences. And that's what we say, we're going to bring these evidences together. The miraculous nature of the Qur'an, the linguistic miracle of the Qur'an, the scientific statements, the historical statements, the witnessing of the people of the book, the prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Really, in fact, if we looked at any single one of these items, all they would be really unique and amazing. But really, when we begin to combine them, and we begin to gather them all together, we can see that really, we have so many evidences to amass from so many different angles to show that really our claim is not just a claim. It is not just something we are saying based upon just faith as people understand it, I believe it. No. Really, there are many, many good, strong reasons to believe that Islam is exactly what it claims to be. The revelation from Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, for the benefit of all of humanity. And as something I would like to really add, maybe it's not exactly part of our topic, but I would like to add it, is that evidence is very important for us as Muslims. Whatever you do as a Muslim, whatever you believe as a Muslim, whatever you practice as a Muslim, it should be based upon evidence. Our religion is not based upon guesswork. It's not based upon what I think or what I imagine or upon some cultures or some traditions that we may follow. Being a Muslim is supposed to be based upon following the evidence. And the evidence means what the Qur'an says and what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. So my brothers and sisters, we'll look forward to you in our next program to continue with this in exciting discussion. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh.